I'm going to be talking on how to break the brown cataract. And literally the brown cataracts are so hard that uh, one really needs to take out your chainsaw to be able to break them. Most important thing is you cannot be choosing the wrong tool. That is your second instrument. You cannot be having your soup with a fork. You need to have a spoon to have your soup. Effort plus wrong tool will give you zero results. So you're going ahead with your perfect settings, the best of machines. If your second instrument is not correct for a hard brown cataract, it will not break. So get the right tool for the right job. Now this slide shows what I mean by the right tool. You need to have the second instrument. It can be a sharp or a blunt chopper, but the, the edge that is there ahead has to be longer because you know that in a brown cataract, the length thickness is going to be bigger. And till the time you don't crack the core of that nucleus, you will not be able to take it out easily. Multiple choppers are available, sharp, blunt. You need to choose for yourself what is suiting in your hand. So experience is a double-edged sword. I always say that and I live by it. What happened with me was I always used to use a blunt instrument for all my cases. I switched to the sharp chopper and I cut my anterior capsule once. Once the anterior capsule got cut, since that day I never picked up that sharp chopper. But that does not mean that I cannot take it up again. So since I've had a bad experience, that does not mean that I cannot take that sharp chopper again. So always you need to keep innovating, you need to keep trying and testing what is suiting in your hand the best. Uh, just look at this gentleman, the right technique, huge rock, huge rock, he knows where to hit it. He knows exactly where to hit it and it will break into two. Imagine trying to break this rock into two by any other method, the machine, the bulldozers, and this guy is doing it by hand because they know exactly where to hit it. What happens on a lot of occasions is, as I said, what we are using, we get used to it and we don't want to use something which is better available. Too busy for, for improvements, that's not the answer. You have to keep innovating, you have to keep trying things. So here's a case, a hard brown cataract. Uh, you've got to make sure that you get a good rexis. Once you have a good sizable rexis, that's only half the job done, especially in a brown cataract. What one needs to make sure is that a hydro dissection is done and it's a freely rotating nucleus. Once it is a freely rotating nucleus, uh, your maneuverability increases manifolds. Uh, preferred technique, Again, it could be a direct chop or it could be a stop and chop. Most important thing is that the core, the center of the nucleus has to break. If you keep breaking the periphery of the nucleus, you will struggle once you reach the core. The periphery you'll be eating up and the core will be left behind. So once you're separating, you see, you have to keep going from the periphery to the center. You have to make sure that the center of that cataract is separated. Your hold is there, the hold of the FACO from the vacuum stays. And till the time my center has not been split, I have not moved my nucleus, I have not rotated it uh, so as to get further cracks into the nucleus. The core has to come out. So th this is one technique. The alternate technique is, of course, a flower petal technique, wherein you keep cracking the periphery and you take the central goodly, as they say, of the nucleus, and you eat that first. Once that central part of the nucleus is out, the periphery becomes easier. But that technique needs a lot of experience. As a beginner, you must, you must try and crack the central part of the nucleus. Once that is done, rest of it becomes easier. And there is no set thing that you have to make only four quadrants. You can make six, you can make eight, depending upon how hard that nucleus is. So rest of it is uh, remaining the same. You keep rotating, keep making smaller pieces. The smaller you make them, the easier it's going to get for you. Also remember, it's a hard brown cataract, a big cataract. So in case a big piece is left, there's a high chance that a phaco salute will happen in the last piece. That will bring pressure onto the posterior capsule and it might break. So this is another um, case in which it is intumescent, so you first go in and you try and uh, reduce the amount of uh, pressure inside the lens. 
once that is done you will see once the nucleus is made in the uh, the rexis is made in this case that there is a brown cataract underneath in younger people generally when you get these white cataracts they are softer but in older people when you get these white cataracts underneath this rexis is lying a hard brown cataract so few points here because it is an intumescent cataract it is very easy for you to be uh, able to run this rexis out so always be careful make sure that your chamber is stable now if you see at this point at this point my vector has to be correct because it's very easy for me to take this nucleus uh, the rexis out again at this point your vector has to be correct only then you'll get a circular rexis if that is not that is the point right at the end mostly when your rexis runs off so in this case you see that once you are embedding the tip the chamber is getting shallow you will be able to see that there will be a lot of curves on the uh, cornea the reason being that the chamber is shallowing once the chamber is shallowing again as sir said it's happening because the side port is not calibrated there's a lot of fluid that is escaping from that side port here again you have to be patient keep trying till again you do not receive a crack in the center core the main part the central core has to be cracked you can keep trenching keep trenching keep trenching till the time your center is not cracked there's a lot of tugging but once you'll be able to receive one crack the rest of them become easier it's the first one that's the most difficult you see again a lot of fluid is escaping from the side port so the chamber is not being shallow but we've got our crack now finally and once that is done now the rest of it becomes relatively easier center has to be cracked that's the message yes yes so all of us are not uh, captain america and we can't uh, do this exactly the way he is doing it with his own hands so we need to get the right tool even he requires a tool to cut it thank you so much